So did Teal Bunbury do enough to convince us wrong that he should be starting in the starting 11 in the next game? I mean, is Annie Baba our first choice defender now? Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please? Any Revs UK. Yes, hello guys and welcome back to the fifth episode here of the Any Revs UK podcast, all things New England Revolution from a UK perspective. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you had a good weekend. Obviously, you know, I did. New England Revolution won 2-0 victory over the Houston Dynamo. It's going to be a nice bite-sized episode in today's uh, episode. Nice. That that did not make any sense, but we'll kind of continue nonetheless. Um, so obviously get the admin out of the way. We're over on social media at Any Revs UK over on Twitter or on SoundCloud, YouTube, all that kind of good stuff. Um, I, th- oh, I say this every episode. I think we're up on other podcast sites. And if we're not, if you please let me know what you listen on, I will try my hardest to get it on there. I'm just not very good at working out how that is done. Right. We played a game over the weekend against, um, who was it? It was the Houston Dynamos. Very well prepared this episode. I, I just, you, you can tell, can't you? And for me, um, I've got to say that I didn't watch the, the live game. Apologies, apologies. It was obviously it was Easter the next day. I've, I've got two children. They were going to get me up early, so I didn't watch. So I've only watched highlights of the game. Uh, but from what I've seen, you know, it was it was a, it was a good performance. Obviously, we won two 0 They did get a player sent off, which which obviously did help. Um, but still, other than that, you know, I think even with ten men, uh, sorry, ten men. With this, this is this is probably the best podcast you're going to hear. Even with eleven men, um, I, I feel that we probably still have walked away with the the three points. And that Christian Pinier at the moment for me just is a, just a delight to watch. He's a, a just completely different level. I mean, obviously there's still the whole what's happening with Lee Win situation, but to be fair, at the moment I, I don't I do, do we need him? I mean, we've got Pinier uh, and Diego playing the best football I've I've seen. Uh, the revolution play for some time now. We kind of need Callum Rowe to start performing, um, but we know that, that he's got it in his locker. Just not really too sure that right hand side is his natural position, but you don't really want to move Diego out there because him and Penny are just linking so well. So, you know, you want them to as close as, as possible at all times. But I mean, for me, it was just a, a solid performance all, all, all round. You know, even even defensively, we, we, we looked. Well, actually, no. I was going to say, but we, we, I think we look better, but we still, we still, you know, we're still open to concede on the counter. That the high press, yes, it 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 is working. It is it's causing issues for problem. But as soon as any team with any pace, kind of, you know, get the we're playing such a high line that any ball over the top with it, you know, our defense isn't fast. Enough. Well, our wing backs with really Isomi, you know, he's he's fast. You know, you've got when Brandon Boy plays at, at right back. He's fast, but Pharrell, you know, Annie Barbar, um, Dielma, uh, Claude, they're, they're just, they're not fast enough to, to, to I don't think, do it. So, if, obviously, we are going to be doing this. You know, it's it's then making me raise the question of, you know, do I don't, I don't know how, how he's going to counterbalance it, but he's, he's really got to think about maybe not pressing the defensive line so high. But then obviously that leaves a lot of space. Then if the attack and midfield are pressing up high, it's going to leave you a lot of space in the, in behind the you know the defence for for teams to really cause us problems. So you have to address the situation by buying, you know, two new centre backs or at least one fast centre back, um, you know that can kind of carry the the burden of the other one. Around. But for me, playing, you know, Andrew Farrell at right back along with Claude or Annie Barber or or, or Tony. That that's that's not good. You could, Sammy can't do it all. Yes, the Hebo, you know, does help out, but you know, he he's starting to get a little bit more involved in the attack. Every now, like you know, I've noticed more heavily in re- recent games. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's it just still 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 seems a problem. Yes, I know it's still very early on, and you know, we could learn to grow and adapt. And you know, at the end of the season, we could be you know in the playoffs, and which I you know I still believe that we have got an opportunity to get into the playoffs. Um. But there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, obviously, attacking, I think, we're still very strong, and you know, it, it just it just seems like everything's moving in the in the right direction, really. Now, I'm actually going to play you some clips 
So I've got clips from uh, Matt Turner uh, and Scott Coldwell as well to play you now. Um, just obviously just their thoughts on, on the game, so I'll run them clips for you now. It's really important to get it, uh, you know, just in our second away game, get that first win. It just, uh, you know, it shows us that we're able to win. It gives us that winning mentality on the road, and uh, I thought everyone brought the mentality. Uh, you know, the, the game itself wasn't pretty, but, uh, but you know, we got what matters, and that's three points. Notice. We'll get a shot up to the bottom of the flexion. The Pantorita is on fire. The Pantorita ties things up. We watched some of their game against Vancouver, and when they played at home, they're buzzing in the beginning. So I, I kind of knew going into it that I was going to have to be be ready to make an impact on the game right from the start, and I was able to do so and keep my team in it. Uh, we caught them on a break, and then uh, two times, and you know, got the goal and they got the red card. And then from there, Houston worked really, really hard and and made it difficult for us to get that second goal that really put them out of the game. So uh, you know, we stuck with uh, stuck with what we we believed was the right thing to do in the game, and we worked hard as well. Uh, elevated our game and got the second goal and eventually the three points. Also, if any of you are a little bit worried about getting to the game this Friday, then don't worry because Brad Friedel has this to say. Hi, this is Brad Friedel, head coach of New England Revolution. I am formally giving you permission to leave work early to come watch us take on Montreal next Friday here in Gillette Stadium. We need all the help we can get and we need your support. Uh, obviously, I raised a poll this question about uh, basically the academy, the Revolution Academy, and do you think that you know Brad maybe should start thinking about building some of the players into the 18 now? Because I don't think you know our depth still in certain positions is is the best. Um, you know, and players like Femi, you know, are they ever going to get into the squad? No, and if if they're not, then do we move them on. Brian Wright, for example, you know, is he ever going to be featuring in the Revolution? The team as such and you know we've got some quite talented prospects on the, on the bench so I did put um, you know three players names down the one player I thought would you know basically I put three players name and then other and if obviously you chose other than comment and uh, Ke Kevin Wang is it Veng or, Va or, Va or Vang I don't know how you pronounce it so I do apologize but he won quite convincingly and to be to be fair I, I, I would actually I've actually named him on my bench for my predicted start 11 against Houston um, against Houston we're not playing Houston are we We've just we've just played Houston. We're not playing Houston again against Montreal. So yeah, I'd like to see. I would like to see him involved. He he, he kind of he kind of went along to the, the preseason. He did feature. He looked pretty good. So you know, I think with Lee Wing going, I think he's you know there. I think he could make a spot on the bench. What other options have we got at the moment? You know, um, in terms of. You know, players that can kind of come in. From what I've seen, he can kind of play anywhere in the midfield as well, which I think is good versatility. Maybe not if you're not CDM, but he can definitely play a central midfield role out wide, uh, attacking cam position as well. So, yeah, I think he gives us another option on the bench, especially if Lee Wynn is moving on. Would there be a need for any kind of transfer then if we did have Kevin on the bench? Uh, you know, we've got Nemeth potentially, but he might be going as well. So I think it's definitely worth thinking about. You know, if we're getting rid of Nemeth and and Lee Wynn, then, you know, is it about time that we start giving him a place at the bench and bringing him on, start blooding him in now, because is he the natural, you know, the next player that's going to be in line, that's going to be coming up to the squad? I think so. You guys seem to think so as well. So I think it's about time we kind of get him on the bench. Um, I'm not going to do player by player this week because um, I don't, again, I don't know how many of you enjoy it. If you do wish it to come back, then please let me know. And obviously, by all means, I will kind of go into it next week. So I don't know if people are enjoying it or not. Um, also, I've put a tweet over on social media as well. It's about voting for, for the Any Revs UK podcast to, uh, for an award. Um, if you could please just um, kind of copy and paste the, the tweet out, that would be absolutely amazing and really, really help support the podcast. Obviously, the support has been absolutely um, ridiculous recently, and I obviously just thank you guys so much. Uh, back onto the, the Houston game, though. As I mentioned, you know, I'm not going to do player by player, but I will kind of mention some. Uh, well, kind of, I kind of already mentioned the guys, but for me again, um, you know, Penia and and Diego's just they're just linking up really, really, really well, um, and you know, I mean, Brad couldn't be more happy of how quickly they've they kind of just learned. It's also it does actually it's, it's weird because it seems like they've been playing together for quite some time. Obviously, a massive um, well done to you know Casido. He kind of came on the last few minutes against uh, New York. Looked good, but obviously, you know, we didn't really get an opportunity 
to see what he could do. And, you know, Brad's come out very recently and, and said, you know, that it doesn't matter what your last name is and it pretty much doesn't matter what you did last season for the team. You know, if you're not performing well in training and you're not working hard, you don't get into his 11, uh, well, he's 18 even. And I think that's quite adamant. And I think, you know, it's quite clear to see that that's how it goes. Till Bunbury is a player that I can imagine trains, you know, his work ethic is just non-stop. And, you know, he probably trains really hard. And you can see that's kind of, he's getting rewarded now by getting game time. He's getting a lot of minutes early on. Yes, he's not been performing the best, but he did grab that goal. Fair enough, it was a tap-in, but he did get the goal. Um, you know, and, and again, you know, he was he was running around. He was running, he was running around for the full, about 60 minutes he was... He was on the pitch, you know, he, he was uh, non-stop as he, he, he gives it his all every match. So you can't really knock him for that. Yes, he's not the most skillfully talented players, but, you know, if he could just be slightly... All he's got to do is work on his finishing. I think if he gets that down, he could be very, 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 very useful. Um, but th- that, obviously, being a striker and not being the best at finishing, that, that's not really the best, is it? Um, but, you know, we've got potentially problems out on that right well. We did have problems at that right hand side, but now we're kind of, we've, you know, weirdly enough, he played a, a different formation. No one really seen it coming because, you know, he was just kind of pre season, that was the formation we were playing. We started this season playing the same formation, but it's good to see that we did have a plan B. So I was, I think I mentioned it in the last podcast, um, but I was a little bit worried that we didn't really have a, a you know, a, pl- a plan B as such. So it's quite nice to see that, that we did. We've got another option, you know, they, they've obviously got to be working on that and training. Um, so it's kind of, you know, it was actually really pleasing to see that, you know, it, it was almost like a fourth, three, three. So I, I kind of imagine that's kind of what it did look like that it, that it was to me. Um, kind of forgot to mention as well uh, that that was the first time that the Revolution obviously have won um, on the road in, in, in US. So obviously only, only on away games playing in non, non kind of, you know, friendlies overseas or whatever. Um, but in 889 days that is the first time on u.s soil that new england revolution have won on the road and that's you know that's ridiculous but it's glad that that hoodoo's now gone so hopefully we can kind of you know go on to bigger and better things now um as i mentioned earlier on defensively i I still feel we're, we're, we're you know not quite there matt turner obviously had another you know amazing game he registered some huge huge saves um and you know, our pace did cause them. I mean, you know, it caused some problems. It's what led to the to the to the red card. You know, um, Penny went through, Beasley brought him down, and it, it was a red card. And uh, but defensively, yeah, I am still I am still very worried. Turner, as I said, you know, he's performing really really well. Did also did anyone see that free kick that uh, Claude Diana, uh that, that hammered? Uh, in uh, hit the bar, that was you know it's good and that supposedly he's been that's what he's been working on that in training as well. So you know with with tyranny with him with you know Diego and and Roe, you know do we need Lee win anymore? Do we do we? I mean that's a good question actually. This is going to be the question for you guys now. Get involved over on social media at any revs UK or in the comment section down below. Does New England Revolution actually need Lee win anymore? Do we need him? That's a question for you guys. I'm not going to answer it. You can answer it. Um, I think obviously the second half. Uh, I think to be fair, I think both, both halves were very very similar in some ways. And I think Houston, to their credit, they did actually play really well. They didn't just sit back and try and defend and hope, you know, to get anything. They did. They were attacking. They were still attacking. And um, you know, Ellis caused a, a few problems. You know, Matt Turner had to pull off a great save from him again. Um, made a really really stop and like a one on one in him. Um, but then, obviously, you know, 71st minute and um, Pinea. Well, I was going to say, Christian Pinea, um, absolutely just class player. And I just, you know, I, I've got, there's not enough superlatives out there at the moment. He is just unplayable. I just, I, I just, you know, where do we find him from? Obviously, also, Annie Barbar. I mean, is he first choice defender now? Is he the first choice defender? For me, he is. I, I don't. I don't see how you can never take him out of the team now. Till he starts performing bad, he's definitely the. He's my first choice defender on the team sheet now. When I'm naming it, it's Turner, Andy Barba. That's how it goes. That is how it goes. Andy Barba is the first name on the team sheet. 
I think Andrew Farrell is Andrew Farrell. Um, he is, that is, that is fact. Um, I think he'd be better. I think he did better than what he, you know, the performance he, he played against against New York. Yeah, he did do better. I'm still not. Too, I'm still. I'm still not convinced. Um, I would like to see Tony give give it a game, but saying that you know, Claude didn't really do too much wrong, and obviously that free kick was ridiculous. But Sony looked really, really bright again. Um, on the left, I thought you know he, he definitely seems to be learning the style and. How the MLS works more and more of every single game. Uh, for my man of the match, though, I'm not too sure. I probably actually going to give it to Casido, but I haven't I've mentioned him that much um, as as such. But yeah, I think you know it was his first start. His his, his work rate was ridiculous. Um, you know, he he his passing seemed to be really good as well. He was spraying the passes out wide. Obviously, he got the assist for the Bunbury goal as well. Um, and I think his versatility will really, really help the team as well. It was, you know, it was a really, really good... I think it was a really, really good debut from him. But obviously, that was technically his you know, full-game full debut. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was really, really... I don't know what you always thought of it, but for me, it, was, it wasn't really... I didn't really have a bad word. I've not noted any bad, bad words to you know, down on him. Um, the, the cold was a hebo. You know, partnership is still impressing me. Uh, I mentioned before that um, I posted a tweet the other day saying that you know this might not be everyone's liking, but I really like Hebo. And to be fair, he got more support than I thought he would do. I thought you know, cause I've, I've noticed people aren't still convinced, and I'm you know not 100 percent still sold on him. But yeah, I do, I do think he's a, a bigger asset than what people might think sometimes. If you basically spent the whole match just honing on the Hebo's positioning, I think you might be a little bit more impressed than. Maybe, yes, I know he's passing sometimes, he's a bit erratic, but you've got to watch his positioning throughout the match. And that knowing my now again in the next match against Montreal, it will be absolutely awful. But <laughs> you know, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do now, is trying to watch the new players and see how they're fitting. You know, I think he's learned the game really well and um, he's picked it up really fast. So I, wasn't, I, was, I wasn't overly impressed when I first seen him, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I think he's, he's picked up really, really fast. Um, Rowe actually impressed me more in his substitution appearance than he has done previously. So that's a massive benefit for, for, for me. It's good that he kind of, um, you know, he nearly scored as well. He, he nearly scored. And the, the old Rowe seems to almost be creeping back in. You know, he's, he's hitting shots from outside the box. Um, yeah, but obviously with Casido now, it's going to be hard for him to get back in because if, we, if what Brad says is true, that player's working hard. I'm presuming Callum Rowe is a player that works tirelessly all the time, non stop. I can never imagine him spending training and putting in a you know, half assed training session. But at the same time, his performances on the pitch haven't been the best. Um, his performance last game against Houston was an improvement. Does he make the start in 11 for the next game? Well, you'll find out in the start in 11 very, very shortly. Um, but yeah. It was definitely his better best performance I feel so far in the actual season of pitch. Um, obviously, I was as shocked as anyone to see Peel starting again up top. Um, but yeah, he's definitely he scored a goal, didn't he? He scored a goal. He worked tirelessly. I can't, you know, I'm not ever going to badmouth him. Um, I just don't think he's a striker. But he scored a goal, which is what strikers do. So if he continues like this, then I'm more than happy for him to be in the. Uh, Starting never enough, you know. He's he's keeping Agadello out and there. Uh, Agadello, I mean, is he better than Bunbury? I think possibly he is, and you know, on the pitch we do look at a slightly different team. But yeah, I don't know. I think we still got a bit of a problem with with up top. I, I think that's we are missing a clinical striker that that defence are scared of. I do think that is one area that I would. I would like to see addressed at, at some point because I don't think it's going to be. I don't think that's why where Brad is is focusing on. I don't think that's uh, even in his mind. Well, I don't know actually. It could be. It could be something they are trying to work hard on. But I don't feel at the moment that that is something that they're looking forward to. I do hope that the sound isn't too bad in this one. I've not got my usual setup. But, uh, this one is kind of being done on rushed as well. So, um, but hopefully it's not too bad. 
oh God, I bet it's going to be absolutely awful now when I listen back to it. But fingers crossed, it's not being right. Okay, so on to my lineup now. We're going to be going through the lineup of what I think um, the New England Revolution should line up in the next game. Now, this one was quite, you know, slightly more difficult than usual because I'm not too sure what formation is going to go with. But I'm just going to go on the basis of what I think we should play. So I think we should play uh, the kind of 4 3 3 formation. So I've gone with uh, Turner in goal. Brandon Bay at right back. Come on, he's got to start, surely. I mean, for, I mean, I suppose he's not been playing terrible. So does it warrant dropping him? But at the same time, he's not also been playing that well either. So Bay at right back. Annie Barba and Claude as centre back partnerships. Somi on the left. The Hebo in the defensive midfield role being supported uh, with Casido and Calderwell. And you've got Diego out on the right hand side, Pinier out on the left hand side. And Wag, Wag, Juan Agadello up top. On the bench, uh, we've got uh, Cody Cropper, Chris Tierney, Roe, Nemeth, Bunbury, Della Mayer, and Vang, Vang, Wang. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I think Nemeth should be back now, and obviously all rested and good enough to play, but I'm not too sure because I think he does have another match. But I'm not too, I can't remember if he was called up for the, the, the friendly match or not. I don't know. Hopefully he's back. I'm not too sure. Obviously, if Nemeth isn't back in, within the squad, then it'll probably be Femi. But, um, and probably to fair, Cropper won't make the bench. It probably will be Brad. So it'll probably be Brad, Tyranny, Rowe, Bunbury, Delamaya, Femi, uh, and I don't know who else will be on the bench. Hopefully, it'll take one of the academy lads. I don't know. We could even see Lee Wynn make the bench. I highly doubt it, but who knows? But that's my lineup for the game. Um, predictions on score lines. I don't know. I've not been. This hasn't been my uh, my best, has it? I'm not, I don't think I've predicted a, a right score yet so far. Um, did I predict? No, I didn't predict Houston game. Did I? Did I predict three one for that one or two one? I, I can't even remember what I predicted. Um, I don't think I pred- I've, I'm pretty certain I've not, not predicted a, a game as well. But Montreal Impact versus the New England Revolution, that's, that's what we're on about. Obviously, we're back at home, so we're going to predict a win straight away. That automatically gets a win. To be fair, I don't even think Cody Cropper's even back yet, is he? I'm just thinking now, I don't even think he's back from injury, but that's neither here nor there. Um, now, this one, it's, I believe this one's quite a, a closely contested game um, in, in, previous, in previous years. I think it's seven wins each and two draws. It probably is more than that, I'm not sure. That's what I've got written down. That's what I'm going for. Obviously, last time we played them, it was a 3-2 victory to the New England Revolutions as well, which we, that was an away win as well. That's when we, we actually beat them at their ground. And I think we got goals from uh, uh, Diego Nemeth and um, Callum Rowe as well, growing the score, she knows, in a 3-2 victory. Um, the game before that as well is a, was another 1-0 win. Uh, that was Lee Wynn getting on the score sheet with a Teal Bunbury assist in that one. And then, to be fair, we actually won the two in 2016 as well. We played them three times in 2016 again, uh, picking up two wins and one loss. Uh, the, lo- the first loss was actually uh, away. Um, Kamara grabbing uh, the two goals for us in that one in a 3-2 loss. I believe that was the match where we actually went, I think we went 2-0 up in that match as well. And then somehow by halftime it was 2-2. Um, then we beat them again on the road. In 2016, with uh, Kamara uh, and Rowe grabbing a brace in that match. Kamara, sorry, scoring one, and, and, and Kyle and Rowe grabbing a, a, a brace with a Didier Drogba penalty, I think, was the goal that um, got them one back. And then we, we beat them also at Gillette Stadium 3 0 with uh, Diego Acadello and Kamara getting on the score sheet. Now, do, do we miss Kai Kamara? Do we miss Kai Kamara? That's another question for you guys to get involved with on that one. Do we miss Kai Kamara? Is Kai Kamara the missing... Would he have been the missing piece? I'm not so sure to fair myself. Obviously, he's doing very well at the moment. Um, but predictions. So, again, I'm going to go big in this one, to be fair. I think that the New England Revolution will win 3-1. I think we might concede, unfortunately, Matt Turner. Although I do have faith in you. And my, you are my fantasy goalkeeper as well. Just... Just to let you know, if you are in MLS Fantasy as well, uh, please, again, just ask me over on social media and I will send you a link at any Revs UK over on Twitter and I will send you a link to the league if you are playing MLS Fantasy Soccer. 
Uh, three one. I've just got a feeling the defence at the moment's not causing. You know, it's not got me feeling the best. Uh, that you know, Montreal are doing quite well at the moment as well. That they're you know actually a surprise team for me. Obviously, they beat Sounders last time out, and then they beat Toronto as well. Toronto, I feel, are possibly being hampered by the fact that they're involved in the Champions League thing still. So I think that is you know possibly hampering them. Um, but I'm not too sure on that one. Uh, obviously, they've picked up two wins in the last games. Only one nil wins though. But, you know, I think they've definitely still got a goal in them. Um, 3-1, I'm going to go. And I'm going to go for um, Panea with the goal. And then I'm going to go with um, Diego with a brace. So I think Panea will get the first goal. And then I think Diego will get uh, two holes. And, yeah, hopefully... Hope, no, I'm not even going to say hopefully. We are going to get a win. We are, we're going to beat Montreal. We're at home. We're beating Montreal. That is it for today's podcast, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, then don't forget to show support by dropping likes, shares, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, tell your friends. Tell your friends about it, all that kind of good stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'll catch you next Friday. Editors know there actually will be no um, any Revs UK podcast next Friday because I'm actually in Portugal. So, yeah, sorry. Obviously, guys, if you do need your any revolutions fix, please be sure to go and see, check out Six Dates, One Podcast or Revolution Recap if you're not already. I'm, sh- I'm sure you already are because they're, well, they're, they're far better than I am. Okay, for the next episode and I hope you have a good weekend. <laughs>